this uh, August 24th, Saturday, August 24th, we'll be joined from Vietnam by the Hassan and uh, we are in Tokyo, Kimotan, Kimotan, and yours truly. Um, we are talking actually about uh, populism. That was the start of our discussion. Um, how come the populism is, is taking hold everywhere in the Western world, uh, United States, uh, Europe, not in Japan? Um, how come and what is feeding this, uh, this development? And um, what we have uh, discovered is actually that there are a number of, of things that are, that are going on at the moment in the world. This uh, technology is starting to replace people, uh, taking people out of, the, out of the workforce, driving people out of the workforce. Um, this is the development of the internet, the synchronization, uh, the, the development in, in uh, logistics. Um, the synchronization of, of the legal system, the open financial system, they're all driving and making it easier to do uh, business on, in a global way. So we're, we're, we're more and more globalizing. And this, this has had some very positive effects. Um, as a whole, we have seen that the world, um, uh, said years ago, was, was two-thirds of the, the population was in poverty. At the moment is less than 20%, so that, that's very impressive. And, most of that, a lot of it can be ascribed to to uh, globalization, but uh, they're not only winners; they're also losers. And, and this is something that um, what we what we, what we have actually been, been silent about, what the Western world has been silent about. Uh, we have seen that the, the the middle class in Europe, the middle class in the United States, has been eroding. Uh, there is a bigger gap within uh, these Western societies between rich and poor. The opportunities are enormous. If you know how to navigate the global uh, the global economy, you know how to leverage the enormous investments that have been made in the uh, IT infrastructure in the internet, then uh, there are enormous opportunities to make lots of money. But at the same time, what you see is that these opportunities are very often uh, merely a, a, an, outs a, a, an effort of outsourcing of activities from the more expensive countries to the cheaper countries. And um, the, the people who have been suffering from this is the middle class. Uh, the, those are the, the, uh, the blue collar workers, very obviously. Uh, we have seen a lot of uh, business process outsourcing in the car industry and in other techno techno technological uh, industries, like the, for example, iPhone development is uh, uh, completely uh, taking place in China, that the assembly part of it, the labor intensive part of it is taking, taking place in China. Uh, we see a lot of uh, car manufacturers that, that, uh, that have uh, spun out uh, and, and are making cars, are sourcing cars from, from everywhere around the world. And, uh, and logically speaking, uh, that means that uh, work has been taken away uh, from, from workers. Uh, now, on top of that comes new technology like AI, 5G, IoT, and all these things that that can create some uh, like that can create benefits for us all. But how are we going to redistribute the wealth? How are we going to fix globalization and make sure that that, that actually the, the benefits are not like very unequally spread to to uh, to, to the happy few uh, and to the, the people who are working uh, who are capable of working against a lower salary because the cost structure in their countries are, are haven't caught up yet, um, and, and make sure that, that these people uh, stay part of of, the, of, of our, our system. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so make sure that we are um, uh, able to include these people, because if, if the, the gap becomes too big, then our uh, society becomes divided. And this can lead to instability, what we're currently seeing, um, what we see happening, for example, is uh, uh, that in the United States, uh, Trump is really uh, doing business in terms of, of trying to renegotiate trade agreements, trying to bring jobs back to the USA with, a, with, a, with very big consequences, um, where we have had a trend of integration, of, of globalization. We're now currently seeing that, that Trump is kind of single-handedly reversing that, that, that trend 
trying to bring, basically reestablish their position of the middle class in the United States uh, at the expense of, of uh, some, some very, very big risks of animosity, uh, geopolitical risks, uh, economic risks. Um, at the moment, the, United, the, the economy in the United States is, 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 seems to be doing quite well, but is it really doing that well? And, and what will be the consequences if we, if we see this, these uh, trade um, wars escalate? Um, that could actually hurt the, the, the economy in the United States as well. So the, the, the key here is actually, uh, the, the discussion here is, is what, what can we do in order to make sure that um, we are uh, not getting into a situation where we have clear losers and some winners. Um, and then we, we, we take too much distance and, and look at the overall effect um, and ignore the, um, uh, the fact that, that there are also people who are losing out. Uh, take the taxi drivers who may lose their job because of automation. Uh, take take other uh, people who have been working in factories and, and who now see their job being outsourced to, uh, to uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, that is uh, that is the challenge. Hello, Sam. Hi. Several weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, you said to me, uh, globalization and the globalism is a different issue. Yes. Uh, globalization is an economical issue. Yes. Uh, globalism is a political issue. Yes. Uh, today, you uh, draw the uh, globalization. Right. Today, you would like to uh, pick up the uh, economical issue. Uh, so actually, okay, so uh, ec economics works in mm. this way. Uh, oh, this basically, e economics is assuming mm. that if you can increase oh. the benefit, the yeah. overall benefit, oh. uh, and if you can grow the economy, mm. then it's good. Yeah. That's globalization. Oh. Right? Globalization is basically, if we can, but this is a shortcoming in our economic thinking. It's a, it's a uh, presumption that this is good, but the reality is it's not good for everyone. Yeah. Economists don't worry about that. They are not really, <laughs> no, they are not, they are not so much worried about the, the redistribution effect. For them, it is just a matter of, okay, if we can grow the economy, everything is fine. So we have, we have really, like, the economy as a whole is a very complex thing to capture in yes. models. Yes. So if, if uh, in order to keep it hand, if, if keep a handle on it, uh, we have abs abstracted a lot of human thinking, a lot of human behavior, and a lot of uh, things out of our economic thinking. So uh, globalism, as it stands, in the economic theory is good. Globalization, sorry, globalization in the economic theory is good because it has actually led to economic growth. Yeah. That's good. So that's the, that's what we see in our economic model. Yeah. But globalism as a political yeah. movement yeah. has yeah. failed because actually what we see is that people are not just satisfied because the overall mm -hmm. economy has improved. They see that their kid children mm -hmm. get earning less money than they do. They mm -hmm. see that their jobs, uh, even though they have 20, 30 years of experience that are being, they're being outsourced overseas, they are seeing that Mexicans are, are, are taking their jobs. They're seeing a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, happening. They're seeing that they're paying more tax than people who make lots of money. Mm -hmm. uh, they're seeing a lot of things. And this is all, mm -hmm. um, this is all, it cannot be captured into the economic model, because the economic model just looks at the single value, does the economy grow, yes or no. Yeah. Globalism looks more in detail, say, what does it do to me? Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, we have been telling everyone, that globalization is good, look at it, look at how we have reduced poverty, look at how the healthcare has improved in, 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 in third world countries, look at all these things, you can find all kinds of examples, but if, if they have not been talking about the fact that actually a lot of blue collar workers have lost their jobs. And at the moment, a lot of white collar workers, the, 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 the kind of like uh, standardized, more easily automatable um, uh, things for, that blue, white collar workers are doing, are also on the verge of being automized and are already being automized. If you think, of, for example, about the uh, telephone operators, the people that call you, the, the service desks, etc., that's already being taken uh, taken out of the United States, out of Europe, into uh, Philippines and India and other countries, um, and and that is a, a trend that will that will uh, follow. So, 
basically uh, different countries are pointing at different causes for this mm -hmm. and they have different solutions for this. So Trump is saying it's the Mexicans who come in, they're taking our jobs, it's, it's the Chinese who, are, who have unfair trade practices. It, it, it's everywhere. Uh, he's not talking about automation, he's not talking about technology, it's not because basically what can you do about technology. Um, but uh, he's, he's trying to, left, right, and center, trying to renegotiate the deal to get a better deal for the, the American people who are, who, who've been left out in this system, who have been left out, who, who do not have, um, yeah, who not have gained from, from everything that, that has happened in the past 30 years.